Twice! They're looking for him. How is he? Oh, I'm not sure. He's bleeding like crazy. Oh my god! It's all over the place. I don't know why people decorate white. Look, if he doesn't call in two minutes, call him a hospital. I'm going to have a cigarette pin. But after 18 months, the hell you are. Hold on to yourself, will you? Alright, 
Here, let, let me think a minute. Well, take your time, because I don't answer doors. I only speak to Dr. Dudley. All right. It's got to be Lenny or Ernie, one of the others. Look, we've got to let them in. You've got arms. Reach down. I've got the dry trolley up and bandage is here. Don't tell them what happened. I need a few minutes to figure all this out. Look, can't you stall them? His best friends are coming to the, his 10th anniversary party. His wife isn't here. He shoots himself in the earlobe, and I'm supposed to make small talk when they come in? Attempted suicide is a criminal offense, not to mention a pretty ugly scandal. Charlie is deputy mayor of New York. He's my client my best friend. I've got to protect him, don't I? Just play the hostess for a few minutes until I figure out how to handle this. Play the hostess? There's no food out. There's no ice in the bucket. Where's the help? Where's the cheese dip? Where's Barbara? What am I supposed to do to you get back? Play charades? I'm lucky I can still speak English. You're a lawyer yourself. Can't you figure out something to say? Contracts. I draw up legal publishing contracts. If somebody walks in the door and they want to make a deal, I can handle that! Well, take it easy. Calm down. I'll be right back. Put some slippers on Charlie and tell him to answer it. Did you drink my vodka? Why is the vodka better than two puffs of a cigarette? Because they know you quit. And if they see smoke in here, they'll know something is wrong. Oh, and falling at their feet is going to look better? Claire, darling, you look beautiful. Where's Lenny? In the car. We had an accident. Brand new BMW, two days old. Side door. But don't tell Charlie and Myra. I don't want to ruin tonight. Oh my God, are you hurt? Oh, my lip is swelling up a little. Oh, Jesus, I look like a trumpet player. Where's Lenny? Oh, he's coming. He's walking slowly. He's got whiplash. See, that one right around his neck. Pull them straight up. I left him dangling. Do you want to Is there anything I can do? Just don't tell Myra. This party means so much to her. Hi, Charlie. Hi, Myra. We're here, kids. They're upstairs, Lenny. Did she tell you what happened? Some stupid bastard shoots out of his garage like a Polaris rocket. I got four doors on one side of my car now. How did you get that? Uh, stretched out over one side. Looked like a Modigliani painting. You want a drink? I don't think I can swallow past my shoulders. Of all nights to happen. Here's their gift. Stupid glass. If someone brings them a bottle of blue, we'll have a nice gift. I could have lost the tip of my tongue. I'd be speaking Gaelic the rest of my life. It was a brand new, spotless BMW, never before touched by human hands, buffed and polished by German women in Munich, and now looks like a war memorial. <laughs> Hello, this is Leonard Gans. Is Dr. Dudley there? Dr. Please? Dudley? Yes, it is. I have a whiplash injury. I see. Could you tell me what theater he's in? God, I need a cigarette so badly. Could you? It's important. I'm at 914-473-2261. Uh, Thank you very much. I've got to set my stomach. Is there anything to eat? Some canopies or something? Gee, I didn't see anything. No canopies? Where's the cook, Miley? She makes great canopies. Miley, I didn't see her. I think she's off this week. The week of their anniversary party? I think she had to go back to Japan. Her mother was sick. Miley is Chinese. I know, but her mother was visiting Japan. I can only look up. I hope tall people are coming to this party. Where's Ken? Ken? He's in the bathroom. Where's Charlie and Myra? They're still upstairs getting dressed. They're not ready yet? We had a car accident. We're on time. My lip is getting gigantic. I don't think I have enough lipstick to cover it. No nuts or pretzels? I didn't even have lunch today. Three goddamn audits with the IRS on an empty stomach. Claire, get me a diet coke, please, and something to munch Where on. are you going? To the job? Haven't had a chance to do that either. There's a guest bedroom down here. Wasn't Ken using that one? No. He's using the one in the guest bedroom upstairs. Well, why didn't he use this one? I don't know. He said he had to go badly and he ran upstairs. Well, if he had to go so badly, the one downstairs is closer. Well, you know how it is when you have to go. You don't want to stop running. But this is a shorter run. Money! It's not an Olympic event. Why don't you just go? <laughs> That's why they build guest bathrooms. Dr. Dudley calls, I'll be right out. Claire, we have to talk. What is it? 
I'm coming apart at the seams. Dress? No, my nerves. I think I'm gonna crack. I can see. Your hands are like ice. Something's going on here, isn't it, Chris? God, you're so smart. You're always so quick to see things, Claire. You're scaring me, Chris. Tell me what's happening. Well, all right. Ken and I arrived here about 10 minutes ago, and we suddenly heard this enormous- Hey, Claire! You look lovely! Yes, she looks enormously well, doesn't she? I was just telling her that. Isn't that the dress you wore for cerebral palsy? No, I got this one for sickle cell. Hi, Ken! Hi. Where's Len? Oh, uh, Len? Uh, he's in the john. Where's Charlie and Myra? Still getting dressed? Yes, still getting dressed. Uh, how's the new BMW? Is Len happy with it? Delirious. Did he get the new features he asked for? More than he asked for. Great. Hey, Ken, are you finishing that? Because I've got to go myself. I think my, my was in there. Then I'll use my lease bathroom. Call me if she gets back from Japan. All right. Up here, quick. <clears throat> what did you tell them? I can't remember. You can't remember? I couldn't follow what I was talking so fast. Why can't we just tell them the truth? They're going to find out anyway. I don't know the truth yet. Charlie is still mumbling. Now, could you go in there? Uh, he wants to see you. See me? Why does he want to see me? Oh, he's crying like a baby. I can't stop him. He needs a woman. <gasps> to do what? To cry on. I can reason with him, but I can't comfort him. Look. Just let, go in there and let him cry on your shoulder for two minutes, for Christ's sake. Well, is he still bleeding? I paid $1,200 for this dress. Oh, a pilot! Oh, Jesus! <laughs> Hi, Ken. Did you about my BMW? Yeah, yeah, congratulations. Excuse me. Where are you going? Uh, to the John. Didn't you just go? Yes, but not enough. <laughs> Be right with you. This is very weird. Give me the pretzels. There's plenty of food in the kitchen, but nothing's cooked. Why didn't you open this first? There's a duck, roast ham, cold turkey, all the frosting on the table. There's pasta sitting in a pot with no water. Everything's ready to go. But nobody's there to start it. Doesn't that seem strange to you? Not as strange as him peeing twice in a row. <laughs> Have you got something sharp, a nail file or something? Chris started to tell me something, and then she clammed up. The door of my BMW opened like tissue paper, but this thing is like steel. Uh, her hands were like ice, and she couldn't look... Her, her hands were like ice, and she couldn't look me straight in the eye. You know this would be a safe place to keep your jewelry? God damn it! And why are they taking so long to get dressed? What is that about, eh? What are you so damn suspicious for? Give the people a chance to come down. You don't notice anything is wrong. Yes, I noticed. I, I noticed the towels in the bathroom were piled up on the sink and not on the rack. I noticed there's only a sheet and a half left on the toilet paper. Now, I think that's sloppy, but not a scandal. Really? Well, I'm not so sure I'd rule out scandal. You think I don't know what you're talking about? I hear what's going on. I hear gossip. I hear rumors. And I won't listen to that crap. You understand? He is my friend. She is the wife of my friend. Fine, okay? Then forget it. I don't listen to filth and garbage about my friends. I said forget it. All right, come here. What's wrong with here? They could hear us there. Here is better. Will you come here? It's not good. What's not good? What I heard. What did you hear? Will you lower your voice? Why? We haven't said anything yet. All right, all right. There's talk going around about Myra, and I'm sorry, this hurts me. Could you stand on my other side? I can't turn. <laughs> There's talk going around about Myra and Charlie. Only no one will tell it to my face because they know I won't listen. Well, tell it to my face. I'll listen. Why would you want to hear things about our best friends? He's my best client. He trusts me. Well, not just about investments and taxes, but personal things. I don't do his taxes. What's the rumors? Jesus, you won't be satisfied till you hear, will you? I won't even sleep with you until I hear. What's the rumor? All right, all right. 
Your friend Myra upstairs is having herself a little thing, okay? What kind of thing? Do I have to spell it out? A thing? A, a man, a guy, a fella, a kid, an affair. She's doing something with someone on the sly somewhere and it's not with Charlie, okay? You don't know that. You've only heard it. You haven't seen it. Well, of course I haven't seen it. What do you think, they invite me to come along? What's wrong with you? <laughs> Charlie, however, is running up a hell of a motel bill. Charlie? My friend Charlie? No way. Uh -uh, not a chance. He wouldn't even look at another woman. Well, he may not be looking at her, but he's screwing her! Are you lower your voice? Where did you hear this? Someone at the tennis club told me. Our tennis club? What is it? A sacred temple? People gossip there. Christ, they're a bunch of hypocrites. Sit around in their brand new Nikes and Reeboks, destroying people's lives. Who told you this? I'm not going to tell you because you don't even like this person anyway. Well, what's the difference whether I like him or not? Who told you? Carol Newman. Carol Newman? I knew it! I knew it! I hate that goddamn woman. She's got a mouth big enough to swallow a can of tennis balls. How you two doing? Hey, just fine, Ken. I had anything to eat yet? Just a plastic bag. Great! Uh, be right back. <laughs> Wasn't it Carol Newman who spread the other rumor? What other rumor? The rumor that you and I were breaking up. No, it wasn't Carol Newman. It wasn't? Well, then who was it? It was me. You started the rumor? Me, you, the both of us. <coughs> but we're thinking about separating. Didn't we go around telling all our friends? OK, but we told friends. That bitch told strangers. Hey, hey, do not call Carol Newman a bitch to my face. Besides, Carol Newman didn't start the rumor about Charlie. Someone else at the club told her. Well, who was the one who told her? Harold Green. Harold Green? Who the hell's Harold Green? He's a new member. He was just voted in last week. I never voted for him. Yes, you did. By proxy. We were in Bermuda. I don't believe it. A goddamn proxy new member spreads rumors about my best friend? Who's he play tennis with? He doesn't play tennis. He's just a social member. He just eats lunches there. This son of a bitch is a non-playing proxy new social member who just eats lunches and doesn't even play tennis? What does he do for a living? He sells BMWs. <laughs> Has, anyone else... Has anyone else gotten here yet? No, Ken, not to speak of, no. Uh, why? Is anything wrong? Why? Does anything seem wrong to you? Well, you mean apart from the fact that there's no food, no guests, no host, no hostess, and that you and Chris only appear one at a time, we're never together? Yes, I'd say something was wrong. Okay. Okay, okay. All right. Sit down. Glenn, Claire. All right, I can't keep this quiet anymore. We've got a big problem on our hands. Aha! What did I just say, Claire? You just said, aha! What is it, Ken? Tell us. <laughs> Charlie's... Charlie's been shot. What? Shot? Oh my God. Jesus Christ. I don't believe it. I can't catch my breath. Please don't let it be true. No, Charlie, no. Charlie, no. Take it easy. He's not dead. He's all right. He's not dead? He's all right? He's alive. He's OK. Thank God he's alive. Well, where was he shot? In the head. In the head? The head? He was shot in the head? It's nothing. Oh it's a superficial wound. Well, where'd the bullet go? Through his left earlobe. The earlobe? That's all right. I have holes in my ears. It doesn't hurt. You know, I saw this coming, I swear. Now, the truth, Ken. Did she do it? Who? Myra, for Christ's sake. Who else could it be? Wait a minute. Why would Myra shoot Charlie? You don't know what's been happening? You haven't heard? No. What's going on? Charlie's been having a hot affair with someone. It's not hot. You don't know if it's hot. Nobody said it was hot. It's, it's an affair, just a plain affair. Well, who told you? <coughs> well, no one told me that. What I heard was that Myra was having a thing. 
A thing with who? A man, a guy, a fella, a kid, who knows? Someone else told me it was Charlie who was having the affair. What someone else? Some bitch at the club named Carol Newman. <laughs> she is not a bitch. And she only told me what Harold Green told her. Oh, who the hell is Harold Green? Some goddamn proxy new social member who doesn't even play tennis, comes to the club to eat lunches and spread rumors. Well, it seems to me that Charlie's the one who's having the affair if Myra was hysterical enough to shoot him! Now, listen to me, will you please? Myra didn't shoot Charlie. Charlie fired the gun. He tried to kill himself. It was attempted suicide. Suicide? Jesus Christ. Oh my God. Don't tell me that. I don't believe it. No, Charlie, no. <laughs> Charlie, no. Oh, would you stop your grieving already? He's all right. He's all right? It's all because of that no good goddamn Harold Green. That guy is out of the club. I can get the votes. Can we stick to the main topic here? No, look, nobody knows if anybody had an affair. I don't know why Charlie shot himself. So how is Myra taking this? My God, she must be a wreck. I should go up to her. Let me go up to her. Don't go up to her. There's no point in going up to her. She's not here. She's gone. She's gone? Charlie shoots himself the head and Myra leaves the house? She walks out on him now? Now when he's lying up there with a bullet in his ear? It's not in his ear. It went through his ear. Will you listen to me, please? Look, maybe she wasn't even here when it happened. Chris and I were driving up when we heard the shot. The front door was locked, so I ran around the back and I broke in through the kitchen window. You know, I saw that. I thought maybe Miley did it, and that maybe Myra fired her for it, but I did know then that Miley's mother was sick in Japan. Don't talk for a while. <laughs> Let me and Ken talk. You just listen, all right? <laughs> So you broke in and you ran. So you broke in and you ran upstairs. Was he on the floor? No. No, he's sitting up in bed. The television was on. It was one of those evangelist shows. A bottle of, of Valium was on the night table. I figured maybe he took a couple of pills to make himself drowsy, put the gun to his head, started to fall asleep, and bang, shot himself through the earlobe. Is that blood on your shirt, Ken? Where? Below the second stud. Ah, oh, shit! I didn't see that. Well, that won't come out, will it? That's what you're worried about? A stain on your dress shirt? I don't give a damn about my shirt. I'm trying to prevent Charlie from getting a suicide wrap here. When the others walk in, I don't want to explain to them how I got blood on my good silk shirt. You could borrow one of Charlie's. Oh, he's two sizes too big for me. I don't think they notice your cuffs, Ken, if uh, Charlie walks down with a bandage around his ear and Myra's not even at the party. Let the man finish his story, will you? Did he say anything? Did he tell you why he did it? No. I was barely conscious. Did he leave a note or anything? Yes. He had a piece of paper in his hand. Well, I tried to take it from him, but he tore it up and he threw it in the john. He flushed before I could get to it. I am not hearing this. This is not happening. Uh, uh, did you call the police? No. Just the doctor. We told him he fell down the stairs. As long as he wasn't hurt, I did not want to make this thing public. But we have to call the police. The man is a deputy mayor of New York. We're talking front page of the New York Times. Pictures of Charlie with a suit jacket over his head. Exactly! That is what I'm trying to avoid till I find out what's happened. If we cover this up, we're all accessories. I deal with the IRS boys. I'd be the first one they go after. Why would they go after you? With attempted suicide, they open up everything. They want to see his books, his portfolio, his entire financial picture. They'd want to know how a deputy mayor could afford a big house like this. Well, that's no secret, Lynn. Myra's a wealthy woman. She bought the house. She did? I didn't know that. You hear? Now tomorrow it'll be all over our tennis club. <laughs> I'm not calling in the police until I have to. I don't know what you're so worried about, unless you have something you don't want the IRS to know. You're accusing me of hiding something? I'm the one who wants to bring in the police. Maybe you're the one who has something to hide. After all, you made out his contracts, you made out his will. Well, are you accusing me and Charlie of conspiracy to defraud the city? I hear a car pulling up! If you're not calling the police, I am. Oh no, you're not! You're telling me what I'm not going to do? It's pulling up the driveway! Suppose the neighbors heard the gunshot, they'll already call the police. I'll deal with that problem when it arises. Suppose the car is the police, then the problem has arisen. It's a Volvo station wagon! A Volvo? Now I suppose you're worried it's a Swedish police. It's Ernie and Cookie! Ernie and Cookie? Why didn't you tell us? Why didn't you listen? Ken, Myra and I are having trouble with her zipper. No, you're not. We're not? I told them about it. 
About Myra Zipper? We know Myra's not here. Ken told us. Oh. They're stopping to look at our BMW. Did you tell them about Charlie cutting his ear shaving? <laughs> they know everything! The gunshot, the earlobe, the flush it up down the toilet. Everything! Why didn't you tell me you told them? They must think I'm an idiot! So how is Charlie? He fell asleep. He's hung his pillow in his thumb in his mouth. They're coming up to the door! Ugh. Can't believe she's wearing a dress like that to a party like this. Uh, all right, we don't have much time. What, do we tell them or not? Why not? Fergus tells the analyst. Everything you tell your analyst remains confidential. What does patients tell him? We're not his patients. His patient's upstairs sucking his thumb. I can't believe I'm paying a babysitter for this night. Okay, so what do we decide? Do we call the police or not? I say no. Cookie has her cooking show on TV. Suppose she accidentally says something on the air. On a cooking show? What do you think she gives out suicide recipes? <laughs> Look, I still think we say nothing until I find out what's happened. Better safe than sorry. Claire, please open the door. Chris, get us some drinks. Let's look like we're having fun. Well, what is it? We're telling Ernie, but we're not telling Cookie? We're not telling either one of them. I'm sorry we told you. Just open the door. Wait, wait, don't open the door yet. I'll go upstairs, and if Charlie wakes up, maybe I can get the story from him. Oh, I took the volume from him. I hid them in the medicine cabinet. Wait, you hid the volume in the medicine cabinet? Gee, what a great hiding place. Uh, uh, so, so Mrs. Thatcher replies, I don't know, perhaps it's in my umbrella stand. <laughs> Are we ready? Yes, we're ready, we're ready. Mr. Gorbachev? Uh, he, he, uh, he said, uh, I don't know, I never ate cat food before. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, sorry we're late, did we miss much? You've got to get Lenny to tell you the story about Mrs. Thatcher and the cat food. That sounds funny already. <laughs> Everyone looks so beautiful. Cookie. I am just crazy about that dress. You always dig up the most original things. Where do you find them? Oh god, this is 60 years old. It was my grandmother's. She brought it from Russia. Didn't you wear that for muscular dystrophy in June? No. <coughs> Emphysema in August. Oh, what a pretty cushion. Is that for uh, Charlie and Myra? No, it's for my back. It went out again while I was dressing. Are you all right, honey? I'm fine, babe. All right. <laughs> Friendly people. 
High level vodka, please. I should have let what's her name pick it up. Mulu? My lead. Igor. Where's Ken? Ken? Ken's with Charlie. And Myra? Myra's with Ken. They're waiting for Myra to get dressed. Oh, oh, ah. What is it? Uh, it's nothing. It's a back spasm. It's all right. It just shoots up my back and goes. Are you all right, Poops? I'm fine, puppy. All right. Uh, listen, <laughs> why don't we all go outside? It's such a beautiful evening. All right, stop. Hold it right there. Could somebody please tell me what's going on here? What do you mean? Oh, I get it. You think I'm stupid, right? You think I don't notice everyone's acting funny around here? Three people want to get me drinks. Chris wants me to hear this funny story. Lenny wants to get us all outside. Everyone creating a diversion. Why, I have no idea. Am I right? No wonder you're such a high-priced doctor. Go on. Okay. Someone's going to have to tell them. Tell them what? About the surprise. What surprise? The surprise about the party. What surprise about the party? Well, I think it's the cutest thing. Don't you, Claire? Oh, God, yes. <laughs> <laughs> tell them about it. No, you tell it so much better than I do. I'm sorry. I think I'm going to have to sit down. I'll help you. Oh, I got it. I'll do it. <laughs> I need the cushion. Oh, oh, here it is. Here it is. Oh, thank you. Are you all right, chicken lips? I'm fine, puppy. Just to have a good time. I just don't understand why we're wearing our best clothes to cook a dinner. That's not your best clothes, Cookie. It's a 50 year old Polish dress, a 60 year old Russian dress. The dress is hardly an issue worth arguing about. I didn't say we wouldn't cook it. She didn't say we wouldn't cook it. Why is everybody getting so worked up about this? All right, Ernie, let's not turn this into group therapy, please. <clears throat> oh no, see, this is nothing like group therapy, Claire. You of all people should know that. Oh, terrific. Let's just name all the people in your Thursday night group, Ernie, huh? Why are Ernie and I being attacked? We just walked in the door. Please, lower your voices. We're going to ruin the surprise for Charlie and Myra. Huh. What surprise? It was their idea. Listen, I don't want to take the blame for ruining the party. I'll do all the cooking and Ernie will do all the serving. Uh, honey, no one's asking you to do that. Sure, do it. Go ahead. That's great. With us. If she wants, she can clean up, too. Okay, <laughs> then it's settled. Just give me 45 minutes. I promise you, this is going to be the best dinner party we've ever had. <laughs> oh, my God! Give me a break. What the hell was that? <laughs> it's 
fine. It's okay. It's all under control. Oh, hi, Ernie. Hi, Cookie. Yeah. Oh, Chris. Honey, can I see you up here for a moment? Would you all excuse me for a minute? I hate it when this happens. Tell me if I'm just completely crazy here. But was that a gunshot? <laughs> a gunshot? No, no, no. I, I think it was uh, it was a car backfire. <laughs> a car backfired in Charlie's bedroom. <laughs> Ernie, maybe you should go up and see. Well, well why? Chris and Ken and Charlie and Meyer up there. I mean, there's more of them than us. You can't just ignore a gunshot, Ernie. Please go up and see. Oh wait, wait, wait. I I know. I know exactly what it was. It was uh. It was a balloon. They've been blowing up party balloons up there all day. What the hell kind of balloon was that? The Goodyear blimp? <laughs> now I'm going out. No, wait, wait. How are we going to get dinner started? Charlie and Myra must be starving. Now, you and Cookie get started, all right? Listen, I'll have a white wine spritzer, OK, Ern? Well, uh, uh, Claire, could you put on some music, please? I'll be right down, everybody. Let me know if Dr. Doolittle calls. I think it sounded like a gunshot. Help me up, Bernie. Let's get dinner started. Hello? Who? Dr. Kuzak? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yes, 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 yes. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. Hey, is that for me? Hold on. Who's calling? Is that for me? slippers and the gun went off next to his head. He can't hear a thing in both ears. Ken or Charlie? Well, Ken. Charlie was out cold from the back. <coughs> oh, uh, they hung up. I already took the message. You couldn't tell me that while I was on the balcony? What'd they say? They said, Dr. Dudley already called this number and he doesn't want to be pulled out of the theater again. I'm getting a new doctor. I'm not putting my life in the hands of the drama critic from Mount Sinai Hospital. Hello, this is Leonard Gantz. Dr. Dudley did not call this number. Please have him call me back. It's important. So what if Ken wrote Chris upstairs? To call Ken's doctor to ask him what to do for his ears. He wouldn't be able to hear what the doctor was saying over the phone. I gotta get back upstairs. Well, wait a minute. You mean she told him about the gunshots? That means you'll have to explain about Charlie. No, no. She was going to say that Ken was outside and a manhole cover blew up next to his ear. That's a good idea. Except the doctor wasn't in. His service said he was still at the theater. Must be some kind of flu going around on Broadway. They purposely wait till I get to the top of the stairs. Answer that for me, will you? I need a bookmark in my head and stuff, but this is so confusing. Hello? Oh, Dr. Dudley, thank you for calling back. You want to speak to him? No, I'm taking a stress test. <laughs> you know, if Ernie can't figure out something's going wrong here, I'm not going to his group anymore. Hello, Dr. Dudley. Thanks for calling back. 
Well, yeah, well, some idiot nailed me in my BMW about 20 minutes ago. I got a little whiplash here. I see. Charlie Brock? Uh, no, no, I wasn't calling about Charlie. Why? Jesus, Dr. Dudley's Charlie's doctor, too. Um, uh, yes, yes, he's all right. No, he's feeling much better. He's lying down right now. Uh-huh. Chris Gorman? You know Ken and Chris? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think she did call. He's Ken's doctor, too. Maybe he has a franchise. Will you make yourself busy? Put out some music or something. Dr. Dudley, I'm sorry. A cold count, Chris? Hold on, I'll let me connect you to Chris. Which button rings in Charlie's room? Why? Who's gonna hear it up there? Jesus, you're a pain in the ass! <laughs> Hello, Dr. Dutton. Yeah, my wife has a pain, too. Yeah, it's no problem. Let me connect to Chris. Hold on. We owe this guy a gift. Let's give him a cookie as a patient. See what earnings he likes to make with it. Oh, I, I thought I heard Lenny in here. I have a spritzer. I'll take it for him. Have a cookie. Not too well. You know, I gave her some aspirin for her back, but she dropped them in the sauce. Good. Now we'll all get rid of our headaches. Hey, uh, Claire, did, did Lenny mention what that noise was? You mean the gunshot? So it was a gunshot. No. <clears throat> no. I was referring to the sound you thought was a gunshot. <laughs> yeah. Well, it wasn't a balloon. I know that. Um, no, it was a... Can of shaving cream. <laughs> uh, yeah, it exploded. <laughs> Let me get this straight. Shaving cream exploded. It's all right. It washes off. <laughs> Incredible. Ernie, I need you to put out some garbage. I'm not through talking to my group yet. But they're fighting with each other. I put them on hold. Don't. Now, it'll clear up in a minute, Ken. These things don't last long. You think this will last long? Lie down in the guest room for a while, Ken. You'll feel better. You know, maybe if I lie down in the guest room for a while. Right, right, right. So what did the doctor say to Chris? He referred her to another doctor. He's not feeling well himself. My neck is killing me. Where's my spritzer? Is your sister here? No, my spritzer. <laughs> Come on, Ken, I'll keep that towel up again. Well, don't tell your sister about Charlie. Not till we hear the whole story. I've got a problem. Claire, can you help me? Ernie went out the kitchen door to put out some garbage, and the door locked. My hands are full of grease. Could you let him in? Of course. We would all miss him terribly. <laughs> This is an Audi. 
Well, ask Ken. He might know. Ken is reading lips right now. I don't think he can pick up on Audi. <laughs> Jesus, what was that? Cookie just blew up the microwave. What else? Chris, Chris, go inside and see what happened. Claire, go to the door and see who's coming. I'll go upstairs and see how Ken and Charlie are doing. I feel like I'm at the freaking Alamo. Get away from my fingers! Hot, hot, hot! Oh, God, that's hot. <laughs> Of a gun that hurts so damn nice Jen. What happened? Oh, Cookie dropped her ice bag and slipped against the stove, and the hot platter was about to fall, so I picked it up and then I dropped it on the table, and the water pitcher broke and glass shattered and cut her arm, and she was bleeding like hell. I got a dish towel on her wrist, and I propped her up against the cabinet, but I need some bandages for her arm and some weapons for my fingers. I never saw anything happen so fast. I can't believe he's in pain. He said all that without missing a word. What are you standing there for? Get the bandages! I was waiting to see if there was more of the story. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Claire. Did you ask for a drink? You have other things on your mind right now, aren't you? Right. Platoon. <laughs> There's a car. I don't even want to know who it is. Why don't you go and look? Like it's gonna be good news, right? It's Glenn and Cassie. Glenn and Cassie Cooper? Together? That's how they're walking. I heard they were having trouble. Not walking. Did you know that Glenn is running for state senate in Poughkeepsie? So? So? That's all I need is to walk in here and be part of this hushed up suicide attempt. He can kiss his career goodbye. Maybe Ken will figure something out before they ring the doorbell. <laughs> Shit, it's gonna be a tough campaign. <laughs> Listen, I have to go to the bathroom. I'll be right out, you get the door. Well, wait a minute, uh, I haven't gone since I got here. Yes, you did, in my leash room. Yeah, but. No one was at the door then. I held it. Right, someone else will get it. Isn't anybody gonna get the door? Chris? Claire? Are you talking to me? No, Ken. <laughs> Put the towels back in your ears. Claire? Chris, where are you? Oh, screw it. I'm beginning to feel like my car. I've always admired your taste, is what I meant. So hard to you so hard. What did I say? 
It's what you don't say that really drives me crazy. What I don't say? Well, how could it drive you crazy if I don't say it? I don't know. It's the looks you give me. I was giving you no looks. You look at me all the time. Because you're always asking me to look at you. Well, it would be nice if I didn't have to ask you, wouldn't it? It would be nice if you didn't need me to look, which would make it unnecessary to ask. I can't ever get any support from you. You've got all the time in the world for everything and everybody else, but I've got to draw blood to get your attention when I walk in the room. We walked in the room together. It's already been done, Cassie. Please don't start. We're 45 minutes late as it is. I don't want to ruin this night for Charlie and Myra. We are 45 minutes late because you scowled at every dress I tried to wear. <clears throat> I didn't scowl. I smiled. You always think my smile looks like a scowl. You think my grin looks like a frown, and my frown looks like a yawn. Don't sneer at me. It wasn't a sneer, it was a pee. God, this conversation is so banal. I can't believe any of the things I'm saying. We sound like some shitty TV couple. Oh, now we're gonna get into language, right? Oh no, Mr. Perfect. We will not get into any language. I wouldn't want to risk a smile, a frown, a yawn, a pee, or a sneer. God forbid I should show any human imperfection. I'd wake up with the divorce papers in my hands. What is this thing with divorce lately? Where does that come from? I don't look at you sometimes because I'm afraid you don't like the way I'm looking at you. I don't know what the hell you want from me, Glenn. I really don't. I don't want anything from you. I mean, I just wish things were the way they were before they got to be the way they are. God, you stop at me. Come. I want to go home. Go home? We just got here. We haven't even seen anyone yet. I don't know how I'm going to get through the night. They're your friends. They all know what's going on. Jesus, and you expect me to behave like nothing's happening. Nothing is happening. What are you talking about? Don't you lie to me? The whole damn city knows about you and that cheap little chubby bimbo! Will you keep it down? Nothing is going on. You're blowing this up all out of proportion. I hardly know the woman. She's on the Democratic Fundraising Committee. I met her and her husband at two cocktail parties for Pete's sake. Two cocktail parties, say? Yes, two cocktail parties. You think I'm blind. No. You think I'm stupid. No. You think I don't know what's going on. Yes, because you don't. I'm going to tell you something, Glenn. Are you listening? Don't you see my ears perking up? I've known about you and Carol Lou for a year now. Amazing. Since I only met the woman four months ago. Now I'm asking you to please lower your voice. That butler must be listening to everything. What do I care about a butler and a bleeding cup? My friends know about your bimbo. What do I care about domestic help? I don't know what's gotten into you, Cassie. Do my political ambitions bother you? Are you threatened somehow because I'm running for the Senate? State Senate! State Senate! Don't make it sound like we're going to Washington. We're going to Albany. 23 degrees below zero in the middle of winter, Albany. You're not Time's Man of the Year yet, understand, honey? What was that? Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Oh, like I'm behaving badly, right? I'm the shrew, which wife was giving you such a hard time. I'll tell you something, Mr. State Senator. I'm not the only one who knows what's going on. People are talking, kiddo. Trust me. Well, what do you mean? You haven't said anything to anyone, have you? Oh, is that what you're worried about? Your career? Your reputation? Your place in American history? You know what your place in American history will be? I'll come out to stamp. Are you the bimbo to motel together? You're so hyper tonight, Cassie. You're out of control. Been rubbing your quartz crystal again, haven't you? I told you to throw those damn things away. They're dangerous. They're like petrified cocaine. Don't take it out, Cassie. Don't rub your crystal at the party. It makes you crazy. Put it away. Don't let my friends see what you're doing. I don't let my friends see what you're doing. Glenn, Cassie. I thought it was you. How you doing? I'm feeling better. Thanks. Not you, Jen. <laughs> It's Glenn and Cassie. We're fine. Hi, Lynn. Cassie, it's Glenn. Glenn. Did it suddenly freeze up out there? <laughs> freeze up? Wasn't well, that an icicle Cassie has there? Oh, no, it's a uh, quartz crystal. Oh, 
Where's Chris and Glenn? Did somebody come in? Glenn and Cassie, I told you. It's, uh, it's Ken. His ears are stuffed up. Bad cold. Uh, who let you in? The butler. The butler? <laughs> the butler's here? He's getting his drinks. Was he alone? No, the cook's with him. My leave? Thank God, what a relief. We didn't have any help here for a while. Really? Well, where's Charlie and Myra? Charlie and Myra? Well, I, I guess I guess they're in their room. My towel fell off, Lenny. I'll get you a towel. I gotta get the bandages first. Uh, excuse me, folks. I, I gotta get some bandages. Um, Charlie, Myra, mind if I come in? Sure, come on in. <laughs> Lenny, where'd you go? Ken, hi, it's Glenn and Cassie. Lenny, is that you? <laughs> Glenn! That, is that Glenn? Yes, and Cassie. I hear you have a cold. You think I look old? <laughs> well, I haven't been sleeping well lately. Hi, Cassie. Do the others know you're here? Uh, yes, we just saw Lenny. Have you seen Lenny? <laughs> yes, he just went in Charlie's room. I'm sorry, I can't hear a thing. A manhole cover just blew up next to my ear. That's a shame. I said, a man long cover just blew up next to my ear. Yes, I hear you. Anyone getting you a drink? Uh, the butler. Sorry, there's no help here. They're in the Orient somewhere. <laughs> I think he's gone toddy. Yes, a hot toddy would be nice. <laughs> I'm gonna go see if Lenny's in Charlie's room. We're all coming down real soon. Myra, mind if I come in? Sure, honey, come on in. <laughs> I'll be right back. Where are you going? Turn off my crystal. <laughs> I suppose you'd like to make a quick phone call while I'm gone, eh? Anyone in here? Who is it? Cassie, who's that? Listen, is uh, anything going on here? Why, no. Who have you seen? Well, Lenny and Ken for just a minute, and the butler and my Lee. My Lee and the butler are here? My God, I must have been in there for a long time. Are you through there? Uh-huh. You left it lost. Very excited. <laughs> you spoke to Myra? No, I heard her speaking to Ken and Lynn. I'd love to have a copy of that conversation. <laughs> Are you doing there? Because I have to go. Oh, my leads and butler are here. You're kidding. Where's Ernie and Cookie? I just met Ernie. Isn't he the butler? Oh, no. Okay. We've got that one cleared up. <laughs> then they're just back from the Orient. I imagine so. You're so well informed, Glenn. Well, why is everyone up in Charlie's room? Uh, there was something good on TV they all wanted to watch. Right. Very good, Chris. Well, this is beginning to look like a party. Hey, what are we all watching on TV up there? Up where? On TV. The thing you would have to watch with Ken and Charlie and Myra. Oh, oh, that thing, yeah, that, that show, the, uh, the PBS special on, uh, uh, what's his name? Hitler! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, the thing on Hitler. <laughs> on their 10th anniversary, you wanted to watch a special on Hitler. Well, uh, Hitler as a boy. A whole new slant on it. Dinner's coming along! Uh, 
Double Scott, straight up. Oh, <laughs> Say, Lenny, you got those bandages. The bandages? Yeah. yeah, I have them. I left them on Hitler. Uh, on the television. <laughs> uh, I'll be right back. Listen, I'm sorry. I mistook you for the butler. Yeah? Yeah, I kind of thought you did. <laughs> no, actually, I'm an analyst. Oh, for Pete's sake, I'm Glenn. Say, how's your wife doing? Uh, spaghetti's boiling, but the duck's still frozen. No, I meant her arm. Oh, that. Um, not too bad. She's a trooper. <laughs> her fingers are cramping up a little bit. But... Well, maybe she ought to see a doctor. Charlie's got one ten minutes from here, Dr. Dudley. Oh, we called him. He's busy. You called about Cookie's arm? No, about Lenny's neck. Lenny's neck? Mm hmm And when he called back, we told him about Ken's ears. Isn't that incredible for a can of shaving cream exploding? I thought it was a manhole cover. It was! The pressure from the manhole cover made the shaving cream can explode. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear that part. I got him! I got him! Well, there certainly is some excitement around here. Guess who Glenn's doctor is? You're kidding. I wish I did his taxes. Wait a minute, you're Glenn Cooper from Poughkeepsie? That's right. Hey, I have a good friend who knows you very well. Really? Who's that? Harold Green? Harold Green? Harold Green? Sure, I know Harold Green. We went to the University of Pennsylvania together. I haven't seen that guy in years. Say, what's he doing now? He's a goddamn proxy social member who just eats lunches and doesn't even play tennis. <laughs> oh, at your club. Uh, Ernie. Cookie's waiting in the emergency room. Oh, right. Uh, um, here's your wife's very day. Nice meeting you, Glenn. Thought I was the butler. <laughs> Somebody, please! I need a drink real bad. Hey, Ken, how's your ears doing? Oh, beer would be fine, thanks. <laughs> Maybe Charlie has some eardrops. Did you check in the medicine cabinet when you went to get the bandages? Uh, no, I didn't think of that. Well, I'll go up and look. Oh, no, 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 uh, I looked. Yeah, there weren't any. I forgot I looked. Is there a cat in here? A cat? <laughs> yeah, I just heard a cat meow. Well, there it is again. That's the phone, Ken. Why would it want a bone? It's a cat, <laughs> not a dog. Get it. We're hungry too, pussy. We haven't eaten either. Hello. I I'm, I'm sorry, operator. We have a bad connection. Oh, yes, yes. It's Harry and Joan from Venezuela. They're calling Charlie and Myra. This is going to be good. Joan? Well, that's Cassie's cousin. I'm sure she'll want to speak to her. Cassie? Hello, Joni. It's Lenny. Yes, yes, everybody's here. Oh, yeah, we're having a great time. Cassie? And Charlie and Myra? Well, of course they're here. What did you think? <laughs> uh, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Hold on. Claire, speak to her. Me? She's calling Charlie Myra. Will you speak to her? Cassie, it's your cousin Joan from Venezuela. Joan, do you want to speak to Joan? 
Sure, I'd love to go home. <laughs> Joan, this connection is bad. I think I'm losing you. Cassie, will you hurry up? We're losing the connection. Come on, will ya? It's dipped in, everyone. <laughs> Who did that? Who banged on the door? I did. Your cousin Joan is on the phone from Venezuela. It's you the life out of me! I dropped my question on the toilet! A two million year old crystal! Here. I can take this. You take it. You can't hear anyway. What's this? <laughs> Charlie and Myra? Charlie and Myra? Oh my god! <laughs>